almost quarter to 12. It's been a great service, hasn't it? Amen. You all want God to have his way in the left rest of the service? Amen. Amen. I'll try to get done in time for the choir practice at 525 tonight. Amen. I bring bag lunch and a little boy in Sunday school, they were going to have a picnic after Sunday school. And so they were asked to bring a lunch and in the middle of the Sunday school class, he takes the bologna off of his sandwich. He starts wadding it up, just kneading it like dough. The teacher said, son, what do you think you're doing? He looked up at her and grinned and said, I'm making a Sunday school teacher. <laughs> you got it, Brother David. Every day they didn't get it, amen. But anyway, and, and, and so Sunday school teacher got aggravated and went, got the Sunday school superintendent. He got down on one knee in front of the class and said, son, what do you think you're doing? He just kept wadding it up. He said, I'm making a Sunday school superintendent. He couldn't do nothing with him. He went and got the pastor told the pastor what was going on the pastor went in there and he said son I know what you're doing you're making a preacher ain't you, you just kept going he said no sir he said I ain't got enough baloney to make a preacher <laughs> amen amen I don't make you want that good baloney from over at McGee's does it amen what they call that the Yuma Mall over there amen McGee's store Second Kings for the reading of God's word. Thank you for being here. I do have a heart full this morning and a lot on my plate that I'd like to help you with. And uh, I, I, I thank God for my, my young'uns. Uh, I, I'm, I'm saying this because I'm thankful. Charity wants to leave here in time to get back for their service tonight. There's a lot of people think nothing about missing service after service after service. But she wants to leave here in time, a three-hour drive back home to get back to, to her service tonight. Probably got choir practice, don't you? What, are, are y'all going to sing in your choir practice too? Okay. <laughs> They're going to do the same thing down there, Brother Ralph. They're going to sing in their choir practice. Amen. Amen. I appreciate my youngins. And I watched Olivia over here with the songbook. I don't know if you were watching her or not, but I was having a good time watching her sing for the glory of God. Second Kings chapter 18. In verse number one, the Bible said, Now it came to pass in the third year of Hosea, the son of Elah, the king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old with he with he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name also was Abby, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. For the sake of time, turn over the page now. Uh, chapter nineteen. Chapter nineteen. Verse number one. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and he covered himself with sackcloth and he went into the house of the Lord and he sent Eliakim, which was over the household and Shebna, the scribe, and the elders of the priest covered with sackcloth to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. And they said unto him, thus saith Hezekiah, this day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy for the children are come to birth come to the birth and there is not strength to bring forth it may be the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh remember that name whom the king of Assyria by the way his name was Sennacherib his master has sent to reproach the living God and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall you say to your master, These words are very important. Thus saith the Lord. If there's ever been a time in our generation and in our lives that we need to get past what men think and get back to what thus saith the Lord. 
It's the day and hour that we live in. He said, be not afraid of their words, which you have, uh, thou hast heard, which you have, uh, and, and, and which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon them, and he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Help me pray. Father, thank you this morning for our people. Thank you for your presence. Lord, you're not just real. You're very real in our midst this morning. And God, I pray, our Father, this morning that we would realize that, Lord, where two or three are gathered in, together in your name, there you're in the midst of them. And Lord, that you're a very present help in a time of trouble. And Lord, you said, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Lord, we're in a time of need. Many of our families are in a time of need. Lord, our country's in a time of need. God, this world that we live in is in a time of need. The songwriter, dear Lord, said we need thee every hour. And Lord, we confess this morning we need thee this hour. Speak to our hearts. Speak to the heart of that individual that does not know Jesus in the free pardon of sin. Speak to the Christian's heart today. Help us, our Father, along the way. God will give you glory in Jesus' name. And amen and amen. This will not be one message. I believe in my heart that God has so stirred my heart that it will take several messages to exhaust the thought that God has put on my heart. I want to preach on this subject this morning for a little while. And then, since it will turn noon this afternoon for a little while longer, on this subject, when good people receive bad news when good people receive bad news the story that I read to get it in its entirety and I have read this over and over several times chapter 18 chapter 19 and chapter 20 in the book of second kings part of it you can go over in chronicles and grab it but the main characters in the story that I've read is Hezekiah Hezekiah was a good man. Sennacherib is the king of Israel. Excuse me, the king of Assyria, I'm sorry. And Rabshakeh is one of his cohorts, so to speak, one of his messengers that's delivering messages to the people of Judah and to Hezekiah, their king. Now, I want you to stay with me this morning, but first of all, I want to establish, I'll just take just a few minutes and establish that Hezekiah was a good man. Not because I said he was a good man, but beloved, if God puts it in his word, you better believe Hezekiah was a good man. Some, I've had some people, they're so spiritual. Sometimes I believe they make God sick. You say so-and-so was a good man, and they'll say something like this. Well, the Bible said there's none good. No, not one. That's true apart from Christ. But let me remind you of another text. The word of God said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. Brother Taylor, when you stood here this morning, your presence standing here reminded me of a good man. Amen, Brother Ralph. Brother Fred Weston. Your presence just standing here, that desire to sing the songs of Zion Is there anybody that would say, Brother Fred, wasn't a good man? He was a wonderful, wonderful man. I loved him. Hezekiah, it's established. The Bible said he's 25 years old. He begins to reign. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. You want to be a good man? Do what's right in the sight of the Lord. You want to be a good woman? Do what's right. In the sight of the Lord. 
The Bible says, according to all that David his father did. Look at verse 4. He removed the high places. He broke the images. He cut down the groves. He broke in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made. You say, Pastor, why did he break up the, 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 the brazen serpent? Listen to me, beloved. God didn't tell him to make that serpent to worship it. And that's what they had started doing. Mankind is just that way. They get all twisted up in a knot in no time whatsoever. Beloved, God made the serpent and raised it up in the camp and he said, look, and you'll be healed. You'll live when you're bitten by the serpent. A type of Christ lifted up, amen. I'm gonna tell you something right now, beloved. I don't care how many crosses you wear around your neck. If you don't have Christ in your heart, you're not going to heaven. You must be born again. It's more than something to hang on the wall. It's more than a piece of jewelry. It's more than a decoration. Beloved, listen, it's the old ragged cross where our Lord hung and died. And personally, I don't like to see images or jewelry where Christ is still on the cross because hallelujah, they got him down. They they, They planted him in a borrowed tomb and the third day he got up and he'll never be on a cross again. He died once for all. He's a good man. Look at verse number five. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah. What a statement. Nor any that were before him. For he clave to the Lord and departed not from following him but kept his commandments which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him and he prospered with us wherever he went. And he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. I want to say something, beloved. We need some believers in this generation that will rebel against what's going on in this world. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. You can get mad if you want to. They call it a progressive movement. Beloved, you're not progressing when you're getting farther and farther and farther and farther and farther and farther farther away from the Word of God and away from the things of God. You can tax the liquor and excuse it, but it's not going to help. You can legalize abortion and excuse it, but it's not going to help. You can say it's all right to marry a man and a man, but it's not going to help. I'm telling you, beloved, you can pass the laws and get involved in all the lotteries you want to and gamble legally and go down to the bingo house, but it's not going to help. It's contrary to the Word of God. And what the Bible is saying about Hezekiah, he went against all that mess. He was not going to go the way of the king of Assyria. And so the king of Assyria, like many kings, he sticks out his chest said, you don't want to go willingly, I'll force you to go my way. And beloved, I tell you, the Spirit of God just spoke to my heart. If something don't change in America, that's what they're going to try to do here too. Amen. I'm going to tell you something, beloved. Before this thing's over, there may be another reason to clean the basement out. That might be where we're meeting. I'm telling you, beloved, we're in bad shape. I want to talk to you about when good people receive bad news. Look what happens here, if you will. The Bible said in verse number 8, he smote the Philistines. The king of Assyria came up against Samaria and besieged it. Verse 10, the end of three years, he took it. The sixth year of Hezekiah, the king of Assyria, did carry away Israel into Assyria. You remember it's a divided kingdom now. Hezekiah is the king in Judah, not in Israel. Watch this now. Because, look, what, why, did, why did Israel get carried away? Look in verse 12. Because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant. Let me say something to you this morning. I'm trying to hurry. Let me say something to you. Over and over and over in this Bible, God uses wicked people to chastise his own. I'm telling you, beloved, America is too big for our britches. We think they can't nobody whoop us. I'm telling you what's the truth. You listen to me, beloved. It's just likely that God will use a heathen people to help us to return to the God of our fathers. Help us to get back on praying ground. 
get back in this Bible. Hezekiah is fixing to get some bad news. In verse number 13, now in the 14th year of the king, Hezekiah did Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah, and he took them. In verse 17, and the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsarsus and Rabshakeh from Lachish to the king Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they came up and came to Jerusalem. And when they were come up, they come and stood by the conduit in the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. Look at verse 19. Thus saith the great king. Watch this now. Over here, when we started reading in chapter number 18, it was thus saith the Lord. Now it's thus saith the great king. And as a matter of fact, if you will read with me and you'll stay with me in this message, you're going to find out, beloved, that Sennacherib is trying to encourage the people of Judah not to listen to Hezekiah and not to trust in the God of Hezekiah, but to trust in him and his word. It's not the same thing going on in this world today. Amen. Oh, beloved friend, look what he said. Thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, what confidence is this uh, wherein thou trustest? You say, Pastor, how are we going to do it? How are we going to make it? We're good people when we receive the bad news. Number one, you better have your confidence in the right place. You better not have your confidence in the king of Assyria. You better have your confidence in the God of heaven. You know what the king of Assyria will do? This reminds me of a word, politician. One fellow said one time, politics. He said, that's many bloodsuckers. Amen. All the politicians aren't bad. Don't get me wrong. There's some of them that love God. Some of them love our country. But I'll tell you, beloved, listen, it's by design. There's some of them trying to destroy this country that we love. Our freedoms our Bible, the word of God said here, now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me in verse number 20. You say, Pastor, what do we do when we get bad news? Good people, you better have your confidence in the right place. Beloved, let me say this to you. The mistake that many people make is they wait for the bad news to try to start building confidence. Do y'all hear me right there? Don't wait for the bad news to start building confidence. You better have some confidence in the Lord before the bad news comes. Watch what the Word of God said here. Listen to me, beloved. Listen, I could stop right here. I don't have to tell you all this. One doctor's visit. One phone call. One trip to the grocery store. You know what happened in Buffalo up there. I believe according to the testimonies I've heard, there were some precious Christian people that lost their lives that day in the grocery store because some nut took a gun in there and started shooting people. They went after some groceries and ended up in glory. You say, Pastor, what are you trying to say? Think about the phone call that those grandchildren got. When Nana's never coming back, Nana's never going to cook for us again. We're never going to church with Nana and Papa again because they got shot at the grocery store. I'm just trying to tell you, beloved. I thought about this this morning, Brother Ralph, early this morning as I was reading this. I don't know how the word spread, but it spread. I, I guarantee it spread quickly. Brother Jack's died. Sister Carol Hart's crushed. Our preacher's gone. Our pastor's gone. What are we going to do? I'm telling you, beloved, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen, just because that God has a people that are good people does not mean that those good people are not going to receive bad news along the way. We're living in a sin cursed world we go on over Rabshakeh verse 27 he said unto them hath my master sent me to thy master look at verse 28 hear the word of the great king the the king of Assyria let not Hezekiah deceive you you see it here in the Bible 
the word coming from Rabshakeh saying, now listen, listen y'all over there. Hezekiah is trying to deceive you. My master, Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, he's coming after you. Like I told Sawyer the other day, uh, Brother Gary Joe, when we were playing laser tag, I said, son, you're going down. He's trying to deceive you. Hezekiah don't know nothing. That's what some people will sit on church benches just like this and say of the pastor that's standing up in front of them preaching the word of God. Brother John, that's what they said many times, no doubt, about Brother Mitchell down through the years as he stood and opened that precious old book and said, beloved, listen, I remember one of the last things he said. He said, if, if you used to throw a ball off into hell, he said half the Baptists would dive in after it. He said, Pastor, I wouldn't repeat that. Well, I just did. It's a truth. I'm telling you, anything will keep us out of the house of God these days. Anything will keep us out of this book these days. Anything will keep us off of our knees these days. Hezekiah's getting some bad news. Look at with here. Look, look, verse 30. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us. This city shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. He said, Hearken not to Hezekiah. For thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present. I wrote in my margin of my Bible this morning when I read that the Iran deal. You say, Pastor, you have lost it. No, 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 no. No, you just think about it, beloved. Let's put $180 million on a plane and fly it over there and unload it, amen, and make a deal with the devil. Let me tell you something about the devil. He never keeps his end of the deal. There's many young people that's destroyed their lives because they made a deal with the devil. Many countries no longer exist because they made a deal with the devil stay with me please I'm trying to hurry I am not kidding my heart is so full my phone rings and let me say this there might be one in 50 phone calls when my phone rings or when my text goes off brother Michael that's on the good side of things and the rest of them are God's precious people going through trial after trial, after trial. You say, Pastor, you complaining. No, 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 no. I'm not complaining. God's trying to teach us how that we can make it when good people receive bad news. Let's look at it together. The Bible said here in verse number 33, hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all the land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Verse 35, who are they among all the gods of the countries? Uh, that's a little g with S on the end of it. That have delivered their country out of mine hand. That the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand. You know what I believe? I believe Sennacherib is too big for his britches. I believe the word of God is about to come to pass. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Sennacherib's got that attitude. They can't nobody beat me. I done been around. I've been whooping up on everybody. They can't nobody handle me. But he forgot that there's a G-O-D with a big G and no S on the end of it. In heaven, that's looking after his people. And beloved, listen, God loves his people. Watch this now. We can't be listening or responding to the enemy. You say, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, let me bring it down here. Michael, I didn't mean to do this, brother, but I love you. He came out the house the other day and he helped me with my air conditioning. Found out it wasn't my fault, praise God. God put the tile down. He drove a piece of tile up under the door frame and cut the wire in two. Amen. He got it fixed for me. That meant a lot to me. Amen. How many knows Michael's having a problem right now with his speech? He's having a problem with his speech. Well, let me ask you something. Ever since that happened, how many times has old Slowfoot jumped up on your shoulder? How many times? You can't count them, can you? He'll tell you this and he'll tell you that. 
What if this and what if that? This is the reason. This, you better not listen to him. Am I right or am I wrong? How many's ever had Slewfoot jump up on your shoulder and he'll begin to lie to you and he'll tell you everything under the sun except the truth? He'll never tell you the truth. And you know what's really bad? It's when some old long tongue saint of God joins him. Somebody come to the preacher one day and said, Preacher, I need to put my tongue on the altar. Preacher looked to his left. He looked to his right. He said, you reckon we got enough altar? <laughs> you better not be joining in with old Slewfoot on one of God's youngins. God loves his youngins. When good people receive bad news. Watch this now and I'll hurry. You say, Pastor, what have you been doing? Crystal, you'll like this. I've been introducing the message. Now here comes the message, amen. Down at Liberty Baptist Church, Sister Crystal, where I pastored years ago, I had a saying. I said, now in closing, and if you just got excited, you're a visitor. <laughs> Stay with me just a few minutes. Hey, Brother Junior, there's some corn here, ain't there, Brother? Hey, some corn being scattered this morning. We better pick it up. Brother Nick, before the week's over, we may need it. Amen, brother. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, I believe I could handle news. It's bad about myself. Easier than I could. Brother Jeff, as you mentioned, my precious wife, or one of my precious grandbabies, or one of my children. Amen. It'd be easier to handle if it was about myself. Let me show you some things quickly. What should we do when good people receive bad news? Look at verse nine, chapter 19, verse number 1. And when King, King Hezekiah heard it, what did he hear? He heard the king of Assyria is coming. He heard you ain't got a chance. You're going down. You're going to be defeated. When he heard it, look what he said. When King Hezekiah heard it, he ran his clothes, he covered himself with sackcloth, and he went into the house of the Lord. The first thing I see right here is genuine humility. Sennacherib doesn't even know how to spell humility, let alone have any of it. But King Hezekiah ran his clothes and he was in sackcloth. I looked that up this morning. There's a couple of words here. It means it's a sign of submission. It's a sign of self-humiliation. It's a sign of grief. He's grieving in his heart because of what's been pronounced upon his people. He got bad news. The bad news to start with i got to finish this this morning. This is too much not to finish it, but the bad news to start with is about Judah. It's about the people that he's responsible for. So there's genuine humility. But the second thing, the Bible said, he went into the house of God. Listen to me, I'm not being critical. Not at all, not at all, not at all. But the last thing a believer, a good person, a good man, a good woman, a last thing that we need to do when we get bad news, is go away from the house of God. He got the bad news. He humbled himself. And he went to the house of God. I'm going to tell you something this morning. I hope I can get an amen right here. But I found out I can get some help around the house of God. I'm glad Charity's preacher preached last Sunday night at the baptism service, just preached a little short message. But I got some help from the Word of God. He went to God's house. Not only, beloved, do we see that? He said in verse number three, this day is a day of trouble and rebuke, blasphemy for the children are come to birth. And there's not strength to bring forth. It may be that the Lord thy God well, hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria, his master, has sent to reproach the living God. Let me say this to you. This is something we need to realize, beloved. Listen. Hezekiah did not take it personally. Hezekiah said, it's not me you're after. 
It's my God you're after. Beloved, let me say something. As time goes on and we face what we're going to face in the future, that's what we need to realize. It's not us. We're not the problem. It's he that lives in us, Brother Sam. That's the problem. Our Lord, our Savior, our Master, the Lord Jesus Christ. We need God. Not only was there humility and there, there's the house of God, but then God hears his servant. Watch what he said. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah in verse 5. Isaiah said to them, Thus saith the Lord, uh, thus shall you say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard. Wait a minute. How many of y'all realize that when good people get bad news, one of the first things that will boil up in your heart is fear. How many realizes that? And that's the truth. That is a human, that, that it, we're human. We, we can think we're superhuman, we're not superhuman. Afraid. What are we going to do? God said, don't be afraid. The servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast. You remember what the Bible said over in the book of Romans? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. I'm going to tell you something right now. We're probably looking at another summer of cities being burned down. You say, Pastor, uh, what, what are they mad about now? Well, Black Lives Matter, that's done fizzled out. They done found out that's a fraud. You say, I wouldn't put that on the internet. I don't care where it goes. It's a truth. It's a fraud. They took millions of dollars off of people and the only black life had mattered to them. If black lives mattered, they'd do something about Chicago every weekend. Only time they care is if a white police officer kills a black man. And they don't care that he was reaching for his gun or reaching in the glove box. That don't matter. You say, Pastor, we're in a mess. I'm going to tell you something about the mess. It's only going to get worse. Because the love of many shall wax cold. Amen. Watch this now. I'm hurrying. We need God to hear us. In verse number 14, Hezekiah received the letter at the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord. Watch this now. You know what some people do when they get bad news? First place they go is Facebook. First place they go is the telephone. Hezekiah, the word of God said, he went back down to the house of God. You know what he done? He just laid it out there in front of God. He just spread it out. He got the letter. He spread it out before the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. We could have revival, beloved, if we take this message we find ourselves in, amen, and spread them out before the Lord and understand, beloved, that God is working together for good to all them that love him. That's not just an escape. That's the word of God. We don't understand it. It hurts. We fear. But when we get that bad news, we need to spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah understood that. Hezekiah prayed before the Lord in verse number 15. O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the, the cherubims, thou art God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Wait a minute now. How many right now has a problem at all? Any trouble at all in your life? How many has a problem? Okay, now wait a minute. If God is big enough to speak the heavens and the earth into existence, help me this morning. Is he not big enough to take care of my problem? You say, well, pastor... I, I get something out of this message. If God just always take care of our problems and always deliver us from our problems and always just get things to turn out the way I think they should turn out. Let me tell you something. Very seldom do things turn out the way pastor thinks they ought to turn out. But I promise you this. We're going to step off one day on heaven's bright shore. We're going to see the big picture. 
And we're going to holler and scream to the top of our lungs, glory to God. It's worth it all. Because we're going to see him as he is. And then we're going to look at each other. Wow, Brother Justin, you ain't what you was. You're like Jesus. Sister Laura won't even have to wear an angel outfit, amen. I told her last night up at the shelter, she had this nice white shawl on. I said, I said some of us say they have to just guess where we're angels or not. I said, you just want everybody to know you are one. I thank God for Laura for putting up with me. Good people, they receive bad news. What are we going to do? We need some humility. We need the house of God. We need God to hear us. We need to honor God. That's what Hezekiah is doing in his prayer. There's a song, and I love the little medley to the song. God is bigger than any problem that I can or cannot see. He's bigger than all the mountains. He's bigger than everything. I don't serve a little God. Anybody with me? I serve a big God. Watch this now. When God's people receive bad news. Now it's on a personal level. Chapter number 19, it's on a national level. Thank God for men like Hezekiah. Oh, by the way, beloved, let me say this to you. Well, I'm having trouble remembering his name. That's okay. That's a sign of something, but I forgot what it is. Uh, uh, President of Ukraine, Zelensky. Thank you, Miss Eve. She didn't even get to say it. I remembered it. Amen. God help me, Brother Michael. You know what our country was convinced of? That when Russia fired the first shot, the leader of that country would tuck tail and run. There are still some men in the world that have a backbone. They might be fewer and fewer, but there's still some men in this world that ain't going to tuck down and run every time a, fire, a shot's fired. There's still some families in our church that ain't going to tuck tail and run every time the bad news comes. They've proven themselves. They're faithful. They're faithful because God is faithful. They don't understand. They hurt. They fear at times. They're angry at times, but they know that God never makes a mistake. God never says, whoops, watch this and I'm done. That's that part I was telling you about, sister. Amen, Crystal. Watch this and I'm done. Boy, it's good to be here, ain't it? I'm soaking wet, brother. Michael, is that air conditioner working? You sure? I don't believe you. I believe you're one of them rap shackles. You come in here and tell me something that ain't true. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Now it gets personal. Look with me in chapter number 20. In those days was Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. No longer is it talking about the family. No longer is it talking about the nation. But now it's one on one. The man of God is speaking to the king. The king's a good man. Let me say this to you. Good men die too. Brother David, sometimes that man's young when he dies. I visited with Brother Gail. He'll be 93 next month. Sometimes he's old when he dies. I tell you, 93 don't sound too old anymore. Shoot, I thought, I remember when I thought 62 was ancient. Now I'm an artifact. I feel like I'm crystallized, amen. In those days, Hezekiah was sick unto death of the prophet Isaiah. He said, set thine house in order, thou shalt die and not live. Watch this. Then he turned to Facebook. Is that what he said? Brother David, I want you to get this. I want everybody to get it. I'm just picking on Brother David. I don't know why. When that man, Brother Grizzle, turned his face to the wall, 
he realized there wasn't nobody else could help him. Even the prophet Isaiah. Surely you've studied your Bible enough to know what a man of God Isaiah was. The preacher couldn't help him. The prophet couldn't help him. His people couldn't help him. I believe it's significant that he turned his face to the wall. Because when he'd done that, he said, God, it's just me and you now. And the word of God, I want you to read it with me, beloved. I'm almost finished. I really am. Look what it said here. The Bible said, he said, Oh, Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth with a perfect heart. Brother John, I don't know about you, but I couldn't turn to the wall and say that today. I've not always worked walk before God in truth and in a perfect heart but this man I don't believe he was lying you say preacher why don't you believe he was lying because God would have known if he was lying watch what the Bible said I've done that which is good in thy sight and Hezekiah wept sore and it came to pass a a four, or you could say before Isaiah was gone into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him saying, turn again, go back in there, Isaiah, go back in there and tell Hezekiah something for me. He got the bad news. Watch what happens. Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people, thus saith the Lord, the God of David, thy father. I've heard thy prayer. Brother John, that reminds me of that Sunday school lesson when you said sometimes you pray and then there's other times you pray. There's sometimes you pray and it's nothing more maybe than a form or a fashion. But there's other times God's people when we know that we rang the bells of heaven. You say, how can you know you've rang the bells of heaven? Because heaven will ring your bell. He said, go back in there. Thus saith the Lord, here he comes again, the God of David, thy father. I've heard thy prayer. I've seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days 15 years. And I will deliver thee and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of figs. And they took and laid it on the boil and he recovered. And Hezekiah said unto Isaiah, I don't understand this right here. I, I mean, I'm just telling you, pastor, don't understand this. Here's a man, the word of God, he done confessed to God, his heart was perfect. What did he need with a sign? God's already done the work. But Hezekiah says, I, how many's with Hezekiah right here? You know, you're wanting God to show you something. Something that's tangible. I've been there. I've laid out fleeces before the Lord before. Watch this now. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, what shall be the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go into the house of the Lord the third day? And Isaiah said, the sign that thou shalt have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he has spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Y'all remember, what was that thing called? What's it called, Miss Eve? That, 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 where are they told time with it? A sundial. Thank you, honey. I thought I knew that, but I forgot. It skipped. The sundial. In other words, shall it go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? How many knows that ain't going to happen on its own? And Hezekiah said, I want it to go back 10 degrees, and I'm going to know that my God has done exactly what he said he would do. And you can read it right there in your Bible. I don't know. I don't think it was too hard for God. He spoke it all into existence. He just, you know, he hit that thing. Brother Ralph, you said that Miss Shelby wore out over there on the other side of the car. That brake, he hit the brakes. It stopped right there. 
we're going back up 10 degrees. Amen. And Hezekiah knew that God had heard his prayer. I'd like to take you over into Chronicles, but for the sake of time, I'm not going to. It's evident to me, listen to me carefully. Even after this great victory in Hezekiah's life, and God extended his life 15 years, it's evident to me, somewhere along the way there, you can read it over in the book of Chronicles, Hezekiah had a little battle with pride. I'm going to tell you something, beloved. God is so good to us sometimes. If we're not careful, we'll swell up and think we're something. Say amen. I don't know, I don't know if anybody else fights that. But you watch the blessings of God start coming. And beloved, if you're not careful, you'll swell up and think you're something. I'm going to tell you, he's everything. When good people receive bad news, I hope God will take this and use it. Hezekiah thought they were going to be wiped out as a people. Then Hezekiah thought his life was going to be snuffed out. But during it all, he trusted God. One preacher said, and I'd like to repeat it, he said, when we cannot track him, in other words, when you don't know what he's doing, you can still trust him. And I say this morning, God help us. We don't know who will get the next phone call. Sister Kim, I don't know how many times Brian and I walked down the corridor. He probably did the same thing with you. And somebody would be coming out of one of those cubicles devastated he'd say something like pastor we need to pray for him. I'd say brother you're right and in my heart I always wondered how many of them knew Jesus I'll tell you something right now it's good to know Jesus ain't it it's good to know that if a doctor tells me this week it ain't going to be long there's another side of that. It ain't going to be long till I see him. It's going to be long till I see mom, see dad. I want to stay here. I love my wife. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I love my church. Is it all right to say it's my church? I know it belongs to God. It ought to be personal, hadn't it, Brother Wade? Amen. Somebody ought to be sitting out there and say, that's my pastor. Amen. You're my brother and sister in Christ. Amen. May God help us just to be able to recall something when good people get bad news. Let's pray. Father, thank you this morning for our people. Thank you this morning for your mercy. Lord God, you know that I really just kind of scratched the surface of this message. There's so much. I pray, Lord, our people go home and read these chapters and take, take a pen. Write something in the margin of their Bible. Make some notes. Maybe put a little marker in there. When the bad news comes, they could go back over there and see our Lord, that you're still on the throne. Help us not to listen to the enemy. Help us, Lord. The Lord Jesus, you said, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Lord, you said they wouldn't follow a stranger. Help us, God, to be able to discern the voice of the Lord. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning. I wonder this morning if somebody would slip up your hand and say, Pastor, I'm going through something, I need your prayers. Just help me pray. God bless you, God bless you.